All right, welcome back to another SAT video. This is part two. So if you guys watched part one or haven't, then you guys could go watch it. Okay, so let's begin. Question 10. Jamie is preparing for a bicycle race. His goal is to bicycle an average of at least 280 miles per week for four weeks. He bicycled 240 miles the first week, 310 miles the second week, and 320 the third week. Which inequality can be used to represent the number of miles X Jamie used to bicycle on, could bicycle on the fourth week to meet his goals? So basically we have to set up an inequality, right? So looking at this, first of all, this definitely does not incorporate average, right? Because it doesn't, this three doesn't affect the X, so it can't be A. Now, why would the X be multiplying by 280, right? X should be on this side with these numbers. So it can't be B. This looks right, but as you can see, it's divided by four, but the X isn't divided by four as well. So it's not incorporated in the average. So it's not C. So lastly, you see how everything is on one side, X is on the side with these numbers but then the four is on this side. So that works because this is technically dividing everything by four, which is what this uh, choice C lacked. So it means your answer had to be choice D. Question 11. The vertex of a parabola in xy plane above is zero C. Which of the following is true about the parabola with the equation y is equal to negative A times x minus B squared plus C? So looking at the equation that they gave us, we have A, right? We know that A is positive because it's a smiley face. So remember, if it's a smiley face, it means A is positive, is positive, or I'll just put plus. And if it's a sad face, it's going to be A is negative. So in this case, if A is smiley face, it means A is positive. So this negative A has to be negative. So it means the other graph, this graph right here, which is different from this one, has to be a negative or a sad face. Right, so what does a sad face mean? It means that this is going to be your tallest point, aka your vertex, and A is negative. So it opens downwards. So looking at your choices, choice A opens upwards. Can't be that. Uh, B opens downwards. Good. This is upwards. Nope. So it's either B or D. So what determines whether or not it's B or D? So they're talking about the vertex. So this right here is put in vertex form, right? Y is equal to A times uh, X minus H squared plus K, where HK is going to be your vertex. So in this case, your vertex is going to be B comma c right it's going to be this value attached to the x minus b and then this is going to be your x y value which is c so your vertex is bc and it opens downwards meaning your answer has to be choice b so this is basically everything to do with vertexes and interpreting graphs so watch this again if you have troubles with a b and all that stuff question 12 which are following is going to 4x squared plus 6x over 4x plus 2 so this question is asking us to divide, basically. So we divide them, uh, 4x squared plus 6x. So how many times does 4x go into 4x squared? x times, right? 4x times x is 4x squared. So these two perfectly align. 2 times x is 2x. Now we just subtract them. 4x squared minus 4x squared, that gives us 0. 6x minus 2x gives us 4x. So it's a remainder of 4x. And then what do we do from there? So what we do, how many times does 4x go into 4x? one time, right? 1x times, I mean, 1 times 4x is 4x, 2 times 1 is 2. Simply what we're doing is just normal long division, right? As you would divide 5 and 62, right? You just see how many times it goes in the first one, multiply everything out. So same thing. And then we subtract, right? Normal division, you subtract after multiplying. 4x minus 4x gives us 0. And this is 0. 0 minus 2 gives us negative 2. So we have a remainder of negative 2 meaning x plus 1 is going to be answer minus the remainder over the divisor. So your answer choice should be choice D. Question 13. In the equation above, t is a constant. If the equation has no real solutions, which are following could be value of t? So automatically, when they ask for when there's no solution, we immediately think of the discriminant. What is the discriminant? It's basically b squared minus 4ac. Now, what are the three possible situations for this? So if this value is greater than zero, there's going to be equal to zero and less than zero. So if it's greater than zero, there are two solutions, two solutions. If it's equal to zero, there's one solution. And if it's less than zero, there's none. So which of the following are we looking for? Well, it says no solution. So we want b squared minus 4c to be less than zero. Okay, so what's the values of a, b, and c? a is equal to two, b is equal to negative four, and c is equal to negative t, right? Remember, we have to subtract t on both sides. 
that's how we got negative t. And that's equal to zero when we subtract. Okay, now b squared is negative four squared, which is 16, minus four times a, which is two, times c, which is negative t. And we need that to be less than zero, right? So 16 simplify, negative times negative is positive, so that's gonna be plus eight t is less than zero. So okay, which of the following values will give us that? Looking at your answer choices, I need t to be negative, right? In order to get rid of the 16. Well, there's only one value of t that makes us super negative. It has to be a, because if we substitute a, it's gonna be 16 plus eight times negative three is less than zero. 16 plus, or eight times negative three is negative 24, less than zero. Negative eight is definitely less than zero. So it has to be a. Okay, moving on to our last two questions in the multiple choice section. A laundry service is buying detergent and fabric softener from a supplier. The supplier would deliver no more than 300 pounds in a shipment. Each container of detergent weighs 7.35 pounds, and each container of fabric weighs uh, softener weighs 6.2 pounds. The service wants to buy at least twice as many containers of detergent as containers of fabric softener. Let D represent the number of containers of detergent, and S represent the number of containers of fabric softener, where D and S are non-negative integers. Which of the following systems of equations best represents the situation? Okay, that was a very lengthy piece of information, so let's do it. So, okay, we need it to be no less or no more than 300 pounds. So, looking at your answer choices, all of them, as you can see, are no less than 300, so satisfies this condition. Now, we need 7.35 to be attached to the detergent. So, detergent is represented by D. So, we need 7.35D and then 6.2 softener. So, when we add these two up, it has to be no less than 300 pounds. So 6, 7.35 D plus 6.2 S has to be less than or equal to 300. Now looking at your answer choices, I don't know why C and D have 14.7 in them. So we're just going to take them out because this is what the question is telling us. Now they want us to buy at least twice as many containers of detergent as containers of softener. So there has to be twice as much detergent. So D has to be greater than twice as many softeners. So it's going to be D is greater than 2 S or it's equal to d is greater than less than 2s. So that means that these two are systems of equation just by using the information that they give us, meaning our answer has to be a, right? Both of these coincide with both of these. So basically, you just use the information that's given and you just write out your equation. And that's how you do it. Now going on to our last question, this one doesn't seem too long. Which of the following is equivalent to a plus b over 2 squared? Okay, so this is simply just a plus b squared. Or I could just, instead of a plus b, I could use x plus y squared. What's this equal to? This is equal to x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. We should try to remember this formula right here, and it's pretty helpful. Why? Because we have the same situation, a plus a plus b over 2 squared. That's good to the first value squared, so a squared plus 2 times these two multiplied, so a times b over 2 plus last value squared, b over two squared. You see how I just simplified? I plugged in each value using this equation. Okay, so a squared doesn't really need to simplify. Plus two times a times b over two, two over two cancels out, just giving us a b plus b over two squared. So what's b over two squared? Basically it's b squared over two squared, which is four. So this is your simplified answer, also meaning your answer has to be choice d. So this is how, this is the multiplication section or the multiple choice section of the SAT practice test. So make sure to check it out. And in the next part, I'll be doing the short answer. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.